For decades, nuclear power and hydrogen were viewed as distinct paths in the energy landscape. Nuclear energy was often considered a legacy technology, valued for its reliable baseload power, but seen as inflexible and costly. In contrast, hydrogen emerged as a symbol of innovation, a clean fuel with the promise to revolutionize transportation and industry. Today, a new chapter is unfolding as small modular reactors, or SMRs, begin to bridge this divide. These advanced, compact nuclear units are making it possible to produce clean hydrogen efficiently and continuously. This convergence is reshaping perceptions, positioning nuclear-powered hydrogen as a pivotal force in the transition to a low-carbon future. The partnership between SMRs and hydrogen stands poised to redefine what's possible in global clean energy. To understand why this pairing is so important, we need to step back and look at the hydrogen problem. Hydrogen today is full of promise. It's the world's lightest molecule, a clean burning fuel that releases only water when used in fuel cells. It's the only scalable way to decarbonize hard to abate industries like steel, shipping, ammonia, fertilizers, and aviation fuels. Yet the biggest challenge with green hydrogen has always been the same. It depends almost completely on cheap, consistent electricity. Electrolyzers split water into hydrogen and oxygen but they require enormous amounts of power. If that electricity is expensive, or worse, intermittent, the economics collapse. This is why green hydrogen projects around the world have struggled to reach final investment decisions. Developers can't base billion-dollar projects on power sources that swing wildly with weather, season, and grid conditions. The hydrogen industry needs a power source that is clean. It needs one that is abundant. It needs one that is stable. And most of all, it needs one that is available every hour of the day, every month of the year. That's where SMRs enter the scene. Small modular reactors are not your grandfather's nuclear plants. They are not the massive gigawatt-scale concrete domes that take 10 to 15 years to build. SMRs are compact, factory-built reactors designed to produce anywhere from 10 to 300 megawatts of electricity per unit. More importantly, they don't just produce electricity, they produce heat, and that changes everything. Heat is the secret weapon of hydrogen production. Traditional electrolyzers rely entirely on electricity to break down water. But high temperature electrolyzers, especially solid oxide electrolysis systems, become dramatically more efficient when heat is available. Instead of using electricity to heat the water, they use thermal energy. And SMRs are one of the world's most efficient, stable sources of high quality heat. This synergy between SMRs and advanced electrolyzers is so strong that it fundamentally shifts the economics of hydrogen production. Imagine a hydrogen plant running next to an SMR power station. The SMR outputs steady electricity and a constant stream of heat at temperatures ideal for high efficiency hydrogen production. The electrolyzers operate at 70 to 90% efficiency. The plant runs at close to 95% utilization year round because SMRs are designed for continuous operation. This means the hydrogen output is predictable, consistent, and economically stable. Contrast that with a renewable-powered hydrogen plant operating on intermittent solar and wind. Its utilization rate fluctuates constantly. The electrolyzers ramp up, then idle, then ramp again. The cost of hydrogen rises because capital is underused. Electrolyzer degradation occurs more quickly under dynamic operation, and project financiers struggle to underwrite stable cash flow. SMRs solve these problems at once. But what makes SMRs truly revolutionary is their modularity. Because they are factory built, they can be assembled on site like industrial equipment rather than mega infrastructure. Instead of waiting 10 years for a massive nuclear plant, an SMR facility can be delivered, installed, and connected in a fraction of that time. And because they are smaller, they can be located in more places near industrial clusters, chemical plants, steel mills, ports, and hydrogen production hubs. That reduces transmission infrastructure, pipeline requirements, and transport costs. Hydrogen becomes a local product, not an imported commodity. This pairing between modular reactors and hydrogen is exactly what heavy industry has been waiting for. Let's look at the companies and technologies making this real. New Scale Power, one of the world leaders in SMRs, has demonstrated in detailed engineering studies that a multi-module SMR plant could produce hundreds of metric tons of hydrogen per day. 
Their design sends excess steam and heat directly to a high-temperature electrolyzer array, dramatically increasing efficiency. In fact, new scale studies show that SMR-based hydrogen could beat renewable electrolyzer hydrogen in cost under the right conditions. And this isn't theoretical. It is supported by a 2024 techno-economic analysis showing that SMR-powered hydrogen can achieve production costs below 3.5 euros per kilogram today, with potential to reach 2 euro euros per kilogram within the next decade. That's the magic number the hydrogen industry has been chasing. And it's not just new scale. Other advanced nuclear developers, TerraPower, G Hitachi, X Energy, Rolls-Royce, Kairos Power, are all integrating hydrogen into their SMR commercialization strategies. Many of these reactors are high-temperature gas-cooled designs. That means they operate at temperatures far higher than traditional pressurized water reactors. Instead of producing steam at 300 degrees Celsius, they can reach 600, 700, even 900 degrees, depending on the reactor type. At these temperatures, hydrogen production becomes extraordinarily efficient. High-temperature electrolysis thrives. Thermochemical cycles like the sulfur iodine cycle or the copper chlorine cycle become technically and economically viable. These processes split water using chemical loops activated by heat, reducing electricity demand significantly. They are the kind of industrial hydrogen systems that were once considered futuristic but now are being tested alongside real reactor designs. This is the kind of innovation that makes SMRs more than just small nuclear. It makes them the missing puzzle piece in the hydrogen economy. What's driving this momentum isn't just science, it's policy. The US made nuclear-derived hydrogen eligible for clean hydrogen tax credits. That means SMR-powered hydrogen qualifies for the same incentives as renewable-powered hydrogen. Europe is evaluating similar frameworks that single move changes the economics of entire hydrogen regions. It means developers don't have to choose between renewables and nuclear. They can choose whatever pathway delivers consistent, low-carbon hydrogen at scale. For countries with limited land for renewables, SMRs offer a way to produce clean hydrogen without covering thousands of acres with solar panels or wind turbines. For countries with heavy industrial corridors, think India, Japan, South Korea, parts of Europe, SMRs can plug directly into industrial hubs where hydrogen demand is highest. But this combination does more than support hydrogen production. It creates a full industrial energy system. Picture an industrial district in 2030 or 2040. A cluster of SMRs sits at the center. They produce electricity to power factories. They produce steam and heat for chemical processes. They produce hydrogen for steelmaking, ammonia synthesis, hydrogen pipelines, and fuel cell truck corridors. They produce oxygen as a byproduct of electrolysis, which can be used in industrial furnaces or wastewater treatment. The symmetry of this ecosystem is powerful. SMRs deliver what renewables cannot, compact, dispatchable, high energy density power with integrated thermal capabilities. Hydrogen delivers what electricity cannot, long duration storage, high temperature industrial fuel, and molecular energy transport. Together, they create a circular, stable, resilient energy ecosystem. Now consider the implications for global hydrogen competitiveness. Countries like the United States, United Kingdom, France, Canada, Japan, South Korea, and China, all of whom have advanced nuclear sectors, suddenly have a new pathway to become hydrogen superpowers. Countries with industrial heat demand, like Germany, India, or Saudi Arabia, gain a competitive advantage. Places with limited renewables potential, like Singapore or South Korea, gain a viable decarbonization tool. SMRs break the geographic constraints of the renewable hydrogen model. They unlock hydrogen production in places where wind and solar are difficult to scale. And in the regions where wind and solar are abundant, SMRs complement them, providing round-the-clock baseload energy to stabilize the system. However, this isn't a story without challenges. SMRs must overcome regulatory hurdles, public perception challenges, and financing barriers. Nuclear always triggers strong public reactions, and SMRs are no exception. Governments must modernize nuclear licensing frameworks. Investors must adapt to new financing models. Developers must educate local communities. But these challenges are solvable, and when you look at the global landscape, one thing is clear. SMRs are gaining more support, not less.
In 2025, SMR projects are underway in North America, the UK, Eastern Europe, Canada, Asia, and even Africa. The world is moving toward compact, modular, flexible nuclear, not away from it. 